Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And it is the third Sunday of Easter, and we will start with our Easter theme opening song, uh, Voices United number 166, Joy Comes with the God. <laughs> still are affected by injustice. May we walk in solidarity with our indigenous neighbors, working together to dismantle the legacies of colonialism and to support reconciliation. Please turn to the bulletins for our call to worship. Come, walk with us. We will, we will join, join the journey. journey. Let us walk together. We, we will listen and speak. Christ goes with us. Jesus guides our steps. And we light the Christ candle as a symbol of the warmth of self-giving love, the love that guides us each moment in our living. And we will sing another wonderful hymn, number 216, Sing praise to God who reigns above, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
fail to understand the truth of your love. We are frequently confused and filled with doubt. Life can feel meaningless. We wander down the pathways of life, longing to see our way more clearly. Open our eyes this day, that we may see your love and grace. Meet our confusion with the truth of your presence. Feed us with the true bread of life, and help us to change our hearts and our lives, that we may joyfully follow your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's promises are for us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God invites us into newness of life, forgiving and blessing us. Thanks be to God. And we will sing another wonderful Easter hymn, number 186, Now the Green Blade Rises. I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. 
Across the dark sky flash scenes from my life. For each scene, I notice two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to the Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me. So I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever during your trials and your suffering, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was when I carried you. Well, thank you, Carol, for reading that. So what was your reaction? First of all, who's heard of this poem before? Who has a copy of it in their house? A lot of Chisholm people do, pretty well, all of Chisholm had it in their house, and it probably is a copy somewhere in this building. So it's very familiar, and it's um, even people that don't attend church that much will still see that in their house. So when you hear that, what, what sort of emotions came to you when you heard that poem? Comfort. Comfort, okay. Any other thoughts? Belonging. belonging, okay, belonging. Clarity. Clarity. Loving. Loving. I think strength as well. Strength as well. Yeah, yeah so that would be one, I, people would be using that as, as strength when they go through difficult times. And it's, uh, um, when I saw the scripture that I was preaching on this week, I instantly thought, of this poem because it's a it's a journey of walking and it's very similar there's a lot of connections with it that that Jesus is present and the Lord was present during the most difficult times and we learn of this difficult time in the journey to Emmaus so um, listen for that and uh, and it's it's just reassuring and I think a lot of people um, also choose that to be written at their funerals or or things like that. It's a very cherished poem. So we will listen to that. And we will start our scripture off with um, Psalm 116 found in Voices United number 836. <laughs> Sight of God is the death of the saint. 
saints. O God, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your main servant. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And will call upon the name of God. I will repay my vows to God in the presence of all of God's people. In, in the, the courts of the house of God, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Now on that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning when they did not find his body there. They came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. May these words off that are offered as wisdom for a journey. May we, we walk, walk together in their truth. truth. Easter was two weeks ago. And for most of the population, the celebration is over. Most of the unsold chocolates have been bought and those that have not have been uh, taken away from the shelves. And the ham and turkey dinners we had are no more except the bones being stored in the freezer to make soup. The excitement of the holiday is over, and most have gone about living their lives the way they did before. This is the case for our two disciples in the text today. They are beginning to head home from Jerusalem after a very unusual Passover celebration weekend. 
The journey home is not a normal journey. It is a journey of faith. Like last week's text, this selection takes place on the same day that Jesus walked out of the tomb. The text starts off by saying two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. What they were discussing was the ups and downs of their journey to Jerusalem. They had gone to Jerusalem with high hopes, but these hopes were dashed when Jesus was captured, tried, and put to death. They were heading back home with heavy hearts. While they were on the journey, the text says that Jesus himself came there and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walked along? The fact they did not recognize Jesus was a mystery. And there have been several explanations, and one that I believe is that they were too grief stricken that they did not recognize him. Their hopes were dashed too much that they were blind to see the one that they mourned was in front of them. And another inclusion, and I think a connection, is that many, including Mary Magdalene, did not recognize him in her distress as that morning she thought that Jesus was the gardener. Without recognizing him, all they saw Jesus as was a stranger. Jesus as the stranger went along the journey. He walked with them in their grief. He walked with them in their confusion. And he, like many ministers, gave them pastoral care. In their sadness, they assumed that the stranger knew what had happened. It was one of the biggest news items in Jerusalem. And, and if there was Facebook back then, back then, it would have been all over Facebook where people were laughing. So they were perplexed why the stranger who was on the road out of Jerusalem did not know what went on. They assumed that he knew what things had happened. But when they asked him, even though he did know, he said, what things? And by saying this in a pastor way, he was enabling them to share their journey, to share their grief. They explained to him all that had happened to Jesus. They described him as a prophet, and most importantly, they said they had hope in him. Then they explained that their faith was lost when he died. They also shared with Jesus the rumors that they had heard earlier on in the day that he was alive. They said several went to the empty tomb, but they did not see him, nor that those that went to the tomb. When they had said this like a minister, Jesus began to give a sermon. Based on the hope that he had in Jesus, Jesus began to share the scriptures with them. He began to share journeys of faith in the Bible. He started off this sermon by saying, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. He was stating that even when they think that God is not with them, and that Jesus is not with them in their brief journey, that God was present in Jesus, and God was present in a stranger. When he had said this, they still did not get it. They were still sad. They were still confused. But they did feel comfort in this stranger. As they reached their destination, in gratitude, they invited the stranger in, for he had listened to them. 
and he had walked with them during the most difficult part of their journey. It was in their home that they realized who the stranger was. It says when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Jesus was present with them on their difficult journey. Jesus was with them on their journey of faith. In recognizing him, they regained their hope and they regained their faith. Their journey went from hope to despair to comfort and it concluded with joy. Having gone the journey, they gained faith and they began to share the joy and share the faith with others. The presence of Jesus in the stranger assures the disciples and assures us that God is present in Jesus and Jesus is present in others through the Holy Spirit. Most importantly, when it appeared that Jesus was not with them when they were in despair, God's love in Jesus, God's compassion in Jesus was present to them their whole journey. We, like the two disciples, are on a journey of faith. We have chosen to go on this journey of faith because we've experienced the love and grace of Jesus. We have heard this love in the children's hymn, Jesus Loves Me. We have heard it from our ministers. We've seen it on billboards where it says, uh, John 3.16 is up on billboards. Hearing these words and hearing the music, we begin our journey of faith. But like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, we encounter despair. The things we had hoped for in our lives do not work out the way we expect them. We get into arguments with loved ones. We experience the death of family members and friends. We mourn and express our anger when we hear of another mass shooting. Tears run down our eyes when we see the images of natural disasters like tornadoes and mudslides. And it's in that poem, Footprints in the Sand, that we see a journey of faith. Like the person in the poem, we are overjoyed to see two sets of footprints. But when we only see one set of the suffering in our lives, we think that Jesus was not there and that God was not there. But like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, we realize at the end of the journey that God was there and that Jesus was there. It was during those challenging times that Jesus was lifting us up and carrying us through those difficult times. Jesus was present to us, offering love and compassion. Like the two disciples, Jesus is present to us in strangers through the Holy Spirit. These strangers are gifts to us to help us process what we're going through. It is not until these strangers are gone, we realize how God's love was present to us in them. From the moment we are born until the end of our earthly life, we are on a journey of faith. As we continue on our journey of faith, our faith will grow as we experience God's love and God's grace through Jesus and strangers and through friends and family. When we see God's presence in them, we are filled with joy, and we begin to share the joy with others. Thanks be to God. Amen. And talking about walking on a journey, we will sing our next hymn, number 649, Walk With Me, verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs>
our announcements of our faith and life and faith and mission. And uh, first of all, before I forget, uh, yesterday I attended, this is the first time I did this, a judging school for fair judges for baking and canning. And I do have some baking there. Now there is a piece of pie, it's in the container, but when I set it on the table, our lovely cat Oliver put it, I, I guess, walked over it, so there's a little, but the pie's fine, but there's a raisin pie, there's a banana bread, and some of Sandra's butter tarts. So feel free to take it, because I'm going away, I can't eat it all, and I shouldn't be eating it all this time. <laughs> so take it home and share it around. And, um, and that's what we have there. And so I mentioned I will be away um, for the next three weeks. And for emergency pastoral care, Sandra's still around. So if something happens this week, but I hope not, please contact Sandra. And it's Miss, the name is, last name's wrong in the, um, who caught that mistake? Yeah, we, oh, yeah, Luella for sure. So that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she caught, so it's, she's Reverend Sandra Jenkinson, so yeah, you made that decision. And, uh, but the week after when we're both away, Captain McCallum will be looking for taking care of the rush pastor care. Um, so we do have coming up the, um, and I, Marty's getting excited about this, the presentation on Wednesday. I recommend, from my experience from the last one, to come early. I don't know if you can get some parking by the fire hall or 250 Clark, but if you want a closer parking spot, come early for that one. And uh, I think that one will be well attended. So it's uh, a more switzer from the Indian Friendship Center. And um, we do have the bean lunch coming next week with the Mix Surf Festival. And, and Arbs told me already, do you want to just relay the message about who's coming for the parking? No. Oh, no, no, okay. Well, You've got the list of people. Each one individually. Each one individually, okay. When I get the exact information. You get the exact information, so uh, we can do that. But uh, <coughs> hopefully it'll be a really good time to uh, feed the community and, and get to see this town full of people again, so. Um, and we, we're also, if you want pancakes in the morning, we have two places in the morning that day as well. Yeah. Um, there's also a jelly bean count and a silent auction and a couple of other things down there like connect the dots and that at the same time as the bean lunch. Yeah. And hopefully we will have a six foot jug of maple syrup out on the lawn. Okay, well, yeah, I know where that is anyway, so that'll, that'll look really good, and um, it'll be quite exciting, especially to connect the dots, right? So, <laughs> it's like, I remember there's this song, Connect the Dots, La 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 La, which was like Pee Wee Herman back in the 80s, so that's, you know, who remembers that, or remember the kids watching it, so that's, <coughs> and um, then we have actually coming up, um, there's a spring book study, and it's, um, and actually I read this book while I was on vacation on the, on the cruise ship, The Book of Joy, which is a really, really good book. And, uh, and I remember my a copy I got was, I think the last time Lord Roberts was preaching here, he made reference to the book and he left it right here. So that I wanted to read the book, so I actually emailed Lord and said, when I get a chance, I'd like to read it. It's like, okay, return it when you're done. So he got it in Jan he got it in February. So it's a, it's a great book. So, um, and that's for five weeks. So please register with Arlene right there. And that's um, for May 3rd. And there's some fashion show, inventory sale extravaganza at Emmanuel United Church. And they do have the correct number for Judy Barnes number on there. And was there any other announcements? Carol, and then Nick, um, Nancy Binney, one of our congregation, is suffering some serious health 
issues at the moment and could stand our prayers. Okay, so prayers for next day, and now it's our turn. Yes. Just want to make a comment or two or three. Uh, I'll try to keep it about uh, two or three. Uh, <laughs> well, it's about uh, the pancake breakfast. Oh, we, we thought because we can do yeah, that. We can do that. Are on Zoom and that the right. might be on Zoom. Zoom people can hear the, YouTube people can hear the so We finished the four pancake breakfast yesterday. They went over very well. Uh, what was really great, everybody was so efficient that I didn't even need to be there, so I did what I love to do best, just socialize. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yes, and that, that's one of the things of, of these events, it's the, it's the social event as well, so you can get food anywhere, but a lot of people come for social events, so. And, um, we will do that. So, any other announcements then? Okay, we'll move on to minute permission. And this one is entitled, There is no us and them. We are one community. First, there was the pandemic. Then Russia invaded Ukraine, causing global energy crisis and worldwide food shortages. These, in turn, worsened an already precarious food security situation for many communities. According to UNOCHA, the largest global food crisis in modern history is unfolding. At a time when it feels like there's a new crisis confronting us each and every day, it is reassuring to know that mission service partners provide real-time relief around the world on a daily basis. Program Coordinator for Sustainable Development and Humanitarian Response at the United Church of Canada, Thi Van Quang, reminds us there is no us and them. We are one community. The United Church is an integral part of a multinational network of partners in ecumenical relationships over 120 countries. That means wherever there is an emergency, mission and service is there to help. In 2020, a major explosion ripped through Beirut, killing 200 people and injuring 7,000 more. Thanks to generous gifts to mission service, we were able to support partners to respond quickly, providing critically important tools that help to free people who are trapped under the rubble. And as the city recovers, mission and service partners continue to assist in the rebuilding of schools, homes, and other infrastructure. Although mission and service has frequently focused on COVID-19 relief, there is another looming catastrophe that requires our immediate attention. Without a doubt, climate change worries me the most, Huang says. We're seeing increases in droughts, floods, and severe storms that have destroyed crops and agricultural land. The more we support mission and service, the better we can respond to climate calamities. People who contribute the least to greenhouse gases are often most impacted by climate change, Huang explains. Your gifts have made and will continue to make a huge difference, huge differences around the world. What, whenever emergency strikes, thanks to you, mission and service is there to help. And speaking about helping and offering gifts, it is uh, time that we dedicate the offering. We will dedicate the offering by singing more voices, number 191, What Can I Do? Thank mm -hmm. you.
We bring our offerings as a gift of thanksgiving for your presence in our lives. We are your servants, and we offer ourselves with joy. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in prayer when I say, God of resurrection, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. For the church and throughout the world, that as we celebrate the great 15 days of Easter, we may, not, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments around the world and our government and its leaders, we pray that they may resist the corruption of sin and serve the common good. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge and hope and that the church may offer the hospitality of the first disciple offered to Jesus on the road to Emmaus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and share in our resources. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that they may receive good things, and that, that we, your servants, not turn return evil for evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. prayer. And now we pray silently those concerns that we would like to declare to you. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, for whom we pray. Amen. And now we're going to sing our final hymn, number 289, in Voices United, It Only Takes a Spark.
And on that journey, you've experienced God's love. And as the hymn says, once you've experienced it, you want to pass it on. As we go passing it on, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen.